You're good. Okay. Hi, everyone. As I said, my name is Shannon Prado. I have been the Des Moines County Emergency Management Coordinator for uh, almost a year. Um, I started November 6th, so we're pretty close to about a year. Can anybody tell me what emergency management is? Um, I know in this class you've probably seen police officers, uh, firefighters, I assume, many people in the public service realm, but probably have never heard of emergency management. I can assume, right? Anyone? All right, so hopefully we can learn a little bit about that today. Um, I don't know. Up until I went to college, I really had not heard much about emergency <laughs> management either. Um, but we'll learn about that. So, who am I and how did I get here? Um, these are actual pictures of my life. Um, this is my daughter and uh, my animals. So, I went to the University of New Haven in Connecticut. I got a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. Um, I actually got two degrees and I graduated and I thought, cool, now what? Uh, I have so much student debt and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, and I was, I was super fortunate, uh, somebody who I really looked up to kind of took me under their wing and said, well, you know what, come work for me. I'll pay for you to go back to get your master's degree and uh, we can figure this out. Um, so while I did that, I worked for the Institute for the Study of Violent Groups, which was a non-government organization who used open source data to track and trace terrorist movements all over the world. So we used um, things like social media, uh, Google, uh, things like that to look at uh, like drug movements, uh, bulk cash seizures, um, things that uh, terrorist groups were doing. Um, and while I was doing that, I started in criminal justice because I thought that's really what I wanted to do. And I, I said, um, these classes are kind of boring. I already did this. Um, so I kind of reevaluated what I wanted to be. Um, and I, I thought maybe I wanted to go into international disaster relief and humanitarian aid. That's what I really wanted to do. So the university offered a emergency management course. So I thought, well, let me kind of look at that realm. Um, and I actually really fell in love with it. I enjoyed the courses um, and I was able to graduate top of my class with that. So. I graduated and I had a little midlife crisis at 21 and I went and worked on a cruise ship instead of working in emergency management. So I did that for about six years and that's where I met my husband and alas, here I am in Southeast Iowa. So uh, like I said, I started here about a year ago. Um, I actually was very fortunate. The part-time position for Des Moines County Emergency Management came open um, and I was able to get that. I worked in the part-time position for about three months before I interviewed um, for the full-time position. Um, <coughs> Gina Hardin was the Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, she had been in the position for about 28 years. Um, so I knew that I had pretty big shoes to fill, but I applied anyways. So required documents, obviously you needed some kind of a degree. Um, you needed to fill out an application. You did a, a background check. Um, you needed <coughs> references. Uh, you needed a cover letter, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, my interview was actually with a panel of people. Um, I had the Des Moines County Sheriff, the Burlington Fire Chief, and uh, the Board of Supervisors Chair. And they asked 
a plethora of questions, um, some situational questions, some questions about my background, um, some questions about what I would do, and uh, looking to the future for Des Moines County Emergency Management. Um, there was 18 applicants. It took about a month for them to get through the interviews. Um, and lucky for me, I was chosen. So training, uh, I didn't realize what a lengthy process training would be. Um, as an emergency management coordinator, once you start this within the state of Iowa, you have about two, you have two years to complete all the training that you need to have. So it's about a page of different courses that are either online or in person. Um, and you have two years to complete that. Um, with some of those trainings come some exercise requirements that you have to have. Um, and fortunately, I have been able to complete that within the first year. So as I asked, does anybody know what I do? No, that's okay. Um, if I'm being honest, when I first started, I don't think I had a, a good grasp of what I really was supposed to be doing either. Um, it's, it's such a huge realm. So the way that I look at it is I am a resource manager. I am kind of a, a, a connection, if you would say, between the, the local resources here, but also to the state and federal level. So when our resources here become overwhelmed, um, it is my position that can call on the state, it can call on the region, it can call on the federal level to ask for more assistance. Um, so for example, we had that macroverse that happened at the end of August in Burlington. Especially we lost a lot of trees um, the way that it would work is the mayor would come to me and say, you know, we lost a lot of trees, um, we need chainsaws, we need volunteers, we need trucks, we need this, we need that. Um, then it would be up to me to go to the region, um, ask if anybody would be willing to assist with that. If they can't assist with that because they're also overwhelmed, then it would be the state, then if they're overwhelmed, it would then go to the federal. Um, so the disaster proclamations that the governor signs, we always see those in the newspaper, on the news, on Facebook, social media, whatever it may be. Um, those proclamations actually come from me. The governor just gives it the thumbs up. Um, and with that thumbs up, uh, she allows pathways for funding, basically. So, as this says, I work with government agencies, nonprofits, private companies, and or the public to develop effective plans and projects that minimize impacts to the community and residents during the incident. So, you can't see this very well, hopefully you can see it better back there. There's kind of four pillars of emergency management uh, preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. So those are kind of the four pieces that I have to work within. Um, so preparedness, obviously we know what it means to be prepared. Um, I do talks like this, I go to national night out, I try to hand out pamphlets, I try to talk to people about what they should do to be prepared. Um, the uh, response side of it is what I kind of just touched on is um, after a disaster happens, kind of being that resource manager. The recovery side of it, again, um, how do we recover from disasters? Um, who, what resources do we have here? Um, if we don't have food or if people have lost their houses, who can we call upon to assist with that? And then uh, mitigation, of course, uh, that's one that kind of confuses people. So um, who's ever been down to the Burlington waterfront? I have, yeah. So um, it used to actually be kind of a, a nightmare for emergency management down there. 
because um, it would flood every single year, right? Because it, it just was a low-lying area right next to the river, and that would the, the water would come into the businesses, and it would come into downtown, and it just would be a nightmare. Um, since then, the city of Burlington has applied for mitigation grants, which has allowed them to build that beautiful flood wall, um, which this past year even, uh, we were able to put the panels up, which protects the downtown businesses. Um, it protects the Memorial Auditorium. It protects the depot down there. Um, so we're very fortunate for that flood wall. That was a $20 million plus project. Um, and most people don't even know that it's really there. So something that I maybe didn't have a great grasp on when I first started was who my governing body was. So you say, well, you're the Des Moines County Emergency Manager. You work for Des Moines County, right? Well, actually, I don't. Uh, I am a very strange entity, and I'm written into Iowa code. There's this big, huge code book for the state of Iowa that tells us what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do, right? And I am my own entity. So my governing body is comprised of the sheriff, the mayors of each municipality within my district. So that would be Burlington, West Burlington, Middletown, Danville, uh, Mediapolis, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one board of supervisors. And that is my governing body. So they make the decisions of emergency management in Des Moines County. So for example, when I got hired, there was originally a part-time employee for Des Moines County Emergency Management. And when I got hired, they decided that that was not needed. So that is the decision of the governing body. Per Iowa Code, that is their decision to make. So I am Des Moines County Emergency Management and I do respond and I do work for Des Moines County, but I also work for the state. I also work for my governing body. It's confusing to say the least, especially when I'm trying to find answers on how to do things because nobody else is like me. So again, with the code governed by Emergency Management Commission, as per the code, uh, the commission, who they're comprised of. Um, if a mayor or a commission member cannot attend, does not want to attend, doesn't have the time to attend, that's fine. Um, they can appoint a representative. For example, the city of Mediapolis, they do have a representative. They actually have a, their own emergency manager, um, and so they sit on my board. So, I am an employee of the Emergency Management Commission. Uh, I am kind of the glue between a lot of different entities within the county. I serve as the advisor to elected officials in emergencies or disaster response. Um, I can be a coordinator of emergency operations, although police, fire, they have their own way of doing it. They have their own response. Small scale uh, things such as a fire or um, things that police are trained in, uh, hostage situations on a smaller scale. Uh, they're, they're more than capable of dealing with these things and they don't need to call me. But um, of course, if there is a large scale incident and their resources are overwhelmed, that's my role. So here's kind of a, a small list of some of the things that I do. Um, so I look at risks within the county. Um, currently we're in the middle of updating some of our plans. The county has this huge um, hazard mitigation plan, which 
you're welcome to read. It's over 400 pages long. It looks at all of the hazards within the county and kind of grades them based on what we're most likely to be hit with and what it would, what would cost the most. Um, capability assessment. So we look at each, say, municipality. We could, we could look at them and see what they're capable of, where their gaps are. Uh, planning training exercise. We just completed our first CERT Academy day this Saturday. Um, so we had some folks with us on Saturday to do the first of two classes. Um, damage assessments is another piece that I do. So after the storms that went through on August 27th, I was kind of going door to door to the houses that were pretty, pretty badly damaged um, and assessing them. Um, and that information gets sent on to the state of Iowa to determine how much response we need. So I am not a first responder. I am more of a, a second layer of response. Um, some emergency management coordinators around the state of Iowa, they respond to every fire, they respond to every single thing. Um, that is not me. I don't find it necessary. I think our police and our fire, I think that they have a lot of under control and, and I don't think that they need me meddling in a lot of what they do. Um, but I can coordinate resources for local events um, if need be. Um, I can ask for mutual aid from other EMAs uh, that surround us. Um, I can ask for mutual aid from the state and I can ask for mutual aid from the, the federal government. So I'm the only person in this county who can ask for that, which is kind of a cool piece of my job. So they actually did just change this, but for purposes of this, we'll go with it. Uh, I have to complete two exercises per year, which includes other entities around the county. So that would be like police, fire, um, board of supervisors, um, municipalities, it could be school departments. Um, it could be a plethora of people. Um, I have to update 20% of our emergency operation plans each year. So this year I had to do six plans, um, which is a lot of paperwork. Um, those plans look at who our resources are in this county and then um, just list them off and list how they would be a resource in a particular situation. Um, as I've said multiple times, I can act as the liaison between the county, state, and federal levels. I have to have a minimum of 24 hours of training per year. So whether I attend trainings, um, whether I go to other counties to go to tabletop exercises, um, I just have to have that. So um, this upcoming year, I am hoping to learn a lot about hazmat situations. So does anybody remember that there was a truck that spilled a bunch of what we learned to be anhydrous ammonia just around the corner here at the beginning of the year? Um, that's another one of my roles is to respond to things like that. Um, so I will be going out to Pueblo, Colorado to do some training out there. I'll be going to Maryland to do some training there. Um, and then I will be going to Alabama to do some hazmat training as well. So just learning um, as much as I can, trying to soak in as much as I can. Um, on call 24-7, 365, um, that is the case, but also kind of a lie because uh, I do go on vacation sometimes. Um, 
I will be going on a Disney cruise at the end of this month and I will not be available. So when this happens, we usually just call on other emergency management coordinators around us um, to cover our area. Build relationships with partners. That is something that we work on every single day. Uh, we talked about the multi-hazard plan, weather monitoring. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot about this. So how many of these emergencies can occur in Des Moines County? Do we get tornadoes? Do we get flooding? Yes. Oh yeah. How about flash flooding? Yes. Yeah, I was worried about flash flooding this weekend actually because they were calling for three to four inches of rain. <laughs> but we ended up not getting it. Yeah, so you know our ground's super dry and people think, well, our ground's really dry, we really need it, but it's so dry it would have just ran off, which would have caused flash flooding. Uh, drought, we're in a drought right now. Extreme heat or extreme cold, we have those very often. Uh, last winter, does anybody remember we didn't have school for like, it felt like a week because we just got those back-to-back -back snowstorms. It was two weeks. Man, it was brutal. My kid was out of school forever. It's gonna rip my hair out. Yeah, it was even after Christmas. Right? Oh, it was brutal. I know I had to go my Yeah, yeah. Uh, hazardous materials we talked about, civil disorders, uh, radiological incidents. So what's something here in Des Moines County that we have that could be a potential threat to us that some other counties don't have? Uh, ammunition plant. Yeah, yeah. The ammunition plant, that's a right. fertilizer plant. Yeah, well, the fertilizer plant's in Lee County, technically, but it is a threat to us. Since it's good, I blow up this place. Man, yeah, but... That's theirs. Let's not call that ours. That's theirs. Uh, it, well, it's technically ours since it reaches over. The yes, you're right. All right. Uh, major fire. We have those. Um, remember, we had uh, down at the bottoms burning. There's like a whole bunch of acreage that burnt down there. Power outages, energy, fuel shortage, uh, winter storms air crash we do have an airport so that's possible is it probable unlikely unlikely but it's possible a bomb threat possible enemy attack absolutely possible chemical biological warfare let's hope not uh transportation accidents absolutely railway accidents uh there was just one in muscatine Water supply contamination. What would happen if all of our water was contaminated and we couldn't drink it? People would go bananas and it would be like the toilet paper shortage, right? Right? Yeah, but so would everybody else. So then what? I mean, we just had the um, water contamination at the Klein Center, right? Imagine if that was the whole city. We have to get it from somewhere else. Uh, let's see, earthquake. Pro not probable, but possible. We do live on a fault, right? Yeah. Uh, dam or levee failures, we do have levees in Des Moines County. Loss of water, severe thunderstorms, we have regularly. Uh, mudslides or terrorism, anything is possible. Especially these days. Especially these days. So with that, um, mass notification systems. So does anybody get notifications to their cell phones? Um, their houses, email, whatever it may be, whenever we're getting like severe weather. Like, 
if there's a tornado warning or there's like a threat of a tornado in your area, do you use, does your phone like buzz or go off? Yeah. Yeah. So there are programs that we have on a local level that you can sign up for, like Alert Iowa, that can alert you to anything. Different storms, different types of storms. You can get an email, you can get a phone call, you can get a text message. And not necessarily, you don't have to. It's completely terrible, not terrible, tailorable to what you would like, to what alerts you'd like, what you'd like to be alerted for, even what languages you'd like. But it's a great thing to sign up for, your grandparents to sign up for, your parents to sign up for, whoever it may be. And it's a good tool to have. So that way you're not going on Facebook and saying, why are the sirens going off? You'll know. It happens every Wednesday. Every. At the beginning of the month. <sighs> okay, so as I said, these were the, these are the, um, some of the plans that I had to update this year. So this is what I did this year. Uh, next year will be these ones. So it just depends on the year, what we have to update. Um, but these are all the different plans and it goes in a five year cycle. So here's a, a few examples of some things that we have in this area. Um, these, this is our district. So district five, we have a, a whole plethora of sandbags because flooding is very common. Um, we have a sandbag machine. We have a mass casualty trailer. Um, we have this actual, this is an actual picture of the generator and light tower that we have in the event that we need to use it. Um, just some examples of things that we do have. So these are some pictures actually from the past year of my career here. So there's the picture of the flood wall actually up. Um, these are from the tornado uh, up in Yarmouth area. And then this is, uh, I was standing on top of the courthouse taking the picture of the flooding. So this here is actually a parking lot. But fortunately, the flood wall stopped it. This is a, a list of training that I had to do to get started. Um, and then like, like I said, you have to have, each year you have to have more. Um, so yeah, so where do I see emergency management going in the future? So. When I came in, something that I wanted to look at or to think about for the future was, I wanna see it grow. So in our area, I feel like there's kind of a lack of resources. So we're so far removed from Des Moines or from the capital that so often I call or I need something and it's three hours, four hours, five hours. It's, we're so far from everything. Um, the closest resources that we have are usually Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, Davenport, some of the larger cities. Um, and I would like to bring that here. I think that we could be a resource hub for Southeast Iowa. So maybe not five years from now, maybe 10 years from now, it's going to take some building, but that's where I would like to take it. Um, we talked about damage assessments, uh, countywide resource list. This is something that the commission's asked me to come up with and I still haven't been able to wrap my head around it. Maybe you smart kids can think about it. They would like me to come up with a list of things that we have available in the county, not uh, us, but people who live in the county 
who are willing in the event of an emergency, they're willing to allow us to use. So say there is someone stuck in a snow drift and vehicles can't get there and you need a snowmobile in that area. And Farmer Joe down the road has a snowmobile. And we know that because it's on a resource list that I have. But how do you keep a list like that up to date? Because Farmer Joe sells that snowmobile to Farmer Tom and Farmer Tom sold that three months ago to Farmer Jake. And so how do you keep track of stuff like that? So that's something that I've been working on. And like I said, I'd like to build the capabilities here. And that's kind of what I have. So, any questions? What are the big thing you would like to Oh. Well, something that I think that I like about my job, because it's a job, right, at the end of the day, who likes jobs? Um, I think that I really like that I do something different every single day. Um, I am constantly learning something new and I'm constantly figuring out something new. So I, the other day, I'm not kidding, I took an entire like 48 hours to try to figure something out because it was something completely new to me that I never thought I would ever have to do. Um, but now I've done that and I know how to do it. So that's something that I, I like. Anything else? How has it affected your family life? <laughs> um, it really actually it has a lot. So um, prior to this, I was a stay-at-home mom. I stayed home with my daughter for her the most, most of her life, and and it was COVID, right? So we were just home together, and and now I work like sixty plus hours a week. Um, I'm an office of one, so it's always me to answer. Um, so it's a it's a constant balance of trying to figure out. How to balance work and life. What's your advice for someone interested in this career? Someone interested in what? In this career. Um, well, I definitely think that emergency management is a growing field. Um, if you're somebody who's super organized and you like to um, to balance resources or you like to manage people and resources and manage a lot of things at once, then this might be it for you. Um, I would say reach out to your local emergency management coordinator. We are always willing to talk. We're always willing to advise um, and we'd be happy to, to let you follow along do an internship, whatever it may be, to see if it's something that you are really interested in. Anything else on your paper? Or did we get them? Done. The hardest thing about my job is that nobody else does my job. So I can't ask anybody else how to do my job. And I'm constantly trying to figure out how to do my job. Like it's constant. And the thing is, is that all 99 counties have an emergency management coordinator, but every county does it differently. So even if I wanted to ask somebody else from another county, they don't know either. So it's a lot of figuring things out. So I, sp uh, I spent a lot of time this past year trying to figure it out. Um, but once you figure it out, it, it's um, manageable and it's fine, but 
it was very confusing for a little bit and a little bit overwhelming. Especially with the weather year that we had. Holy camole. If the weather could have just slowed down a little bit, it may have been a little bit better. But it was the worst weather incident you had. Ooh. The most challenging, I should say. Honestly, the macro burst actually was probably the the most challenging. Um, that was probably the most challenging, the, the most expensive and uh, most elongated, which wasn't super challenging, um, was the flooding. So the flooding ended up costing um, just under a million dollars. Um, and that is mostly due to the pumping costs that are, are brought on up at the levy district. They do a lot of pumping and their pumps are, um, I mean, the size of this room, they're huge. And so it costs a lot of money. And um, so, but all of that gets reimbursed um, because we were part of a federal declaration for that. Um, so that was the most elongated um, and expensive. Um, the one thing about the flooding that was kind of nerve wracking this year was that rag rye was coming to town and um, as rag rye was starting on the other side of the state, we actually still had our flood walls up and we weren't sure if they were going to be able to dip their tires or not um, because it was still flooded down there. Um, the fire department, public works, um, all the departments that worked tirelessly for like 48 hours to try to clean up the, the waterfront and make it somewhat presentable, um, they did a fantastic job to allow people to dip their tires. Um, it, it really did work out, but leading up to the event was very stressful. Yeah, but I think like even just the smaller events <laughs> of like losing out on sleep uh, because the weather warnings are coming in. Uh, we knew that like even today there, there's a threat for tornadoes today. I mean, it's very small, it's, it's unlikely, but there is a threat in this area. There's a threat for thunderstorms. Um, so it's just like the constant watching of the weather, I think.